Hello, welcome again to our online lectures. Today we'll be looking at the topic diarrhea. And I'm Farm Mark McQueen of Excellence Health College. Today's overview for our lecture, we'll look at the definition of diarrhea, the main causes of diarrhea, features to watch out for when a client comes to a pharmacy complaining of diarrhea. We also look at dehydration, which is very common in diarrhea. How do we prevent and treat diarrhea and dehydration? And we'll look at it, whether it is important for us to give anti-emetics and anti-diarrhea medicines in the management of diarrhea. Then we end our presentations with questions and answers. Definition. Diarrhea means passing frequent loose watery stools three or more times in a day. I would like us to take notice of the keywords, passing frequent loose watery stools three or more times in a day. Looking at the pathophysiology of diarrhea, that is what happens really in diarrhea, with the image that we can see, um, the anatomy of the gastrointestinal tract, Diarrhea normally happens in the lower part of the gastrointestinal tract, that is the colon. And you could see that normally when it happens, the greeny substance you are seeing is stool. In the normal where the in event where there's no problem with our body, our body absorbs a lot of water from the stool. So the stool will come out formed and normally in a serenical form, which means that a lot of water has been reabsorbed by our body, making the stool into a fine cylindrical shape. However, in diarrhea, there's so much water in the stool that the colon can, can't hold it and it goes off. And this water is not reabsorbed by the body. So you can see that the amount of water here, okay, in this diagram where the Kesa is showing, the amount of water being absorbed is far, far less as compared to the normal one we are seeing up there. Now, this one is very important because let's take note that what the patient may be losing is not just water. The patient will be losing water with essential minerals, okay, like sodium and potassium. Not only that, also the patient will lose a lot of energy, okay, because the body is not absorbing much food. Once this thing is going on, then the patient may be weaker. So, in the pathophysiology of diarrhea, the main issue is that the patient is losing a lot of water. Not only that, the patient is losing a lot of minerals, vital minerals that the body needs. Also, we are losing a lot of energy, okay, because the food is not being absorbed. And that could be a real harm to our patient. So in treating diarrhea, these are the three key things we want to look at. To restore the fluid the patient have lost, to give back the nutrients, the patients have lost and also to give back the minerals in the form of electrolytes that the patient have lost. Now our body is made up of 60% of water if it's male, approximately females about 55 and babies almost about 78% that is much. What it means is that in diarrhea if we don't help the patient immediately the patient can become dehydrated and that can lead to a lot of complications which will be seen later on in our lectures. What are the main causes of diarrhea? Diarrhea is caused, can be caused by poor nutrition and can also be caused by shortage of water. And here, normally when there's shortage of water, people may try to use any type of water that they have. And these waters normally may not be treated, well treated. And that can lead to a lot of infections. Diarrhea can also be caused by viral infections, especially intestinal flu. Sometimes children, even common cold, can give them diarrhea. I've seen children that they have measles, they have diarrhea. So most viral infections can also give diarrhea. Infections of the ear can also give, okay, ear, nose, and throat infections, as I've said in children. When they come to the pharmacy, we are supposed to also check if the child is putting their fingers in the ear, it could be an ear infection and that can also cause diarrhea. Malaria can also cause diarrhea, especially in children. And I've seen this in my practice lots of time that when they come to the pharmacy, we are looking at for other signs 
and you may not be seen and it's advisable we run a rapid diagnosis test for malaria in children sometimes i've said we see that malaria can also cause diarrhea and obviously food poisoning where food is not kept well and other microorganisms grow on the food okay they produce something that is called an enterotoxin and this toxin so poison substance produced by the bacteria when one takes it inside, it may cause a lot of damage to our intestinal or digestive system. All right, so food poisoning can also cause diarrhea. Now, when babies are being weaned off, or babies that we introduce baby formulas to them, difficulty in them digesting the food can also be seen as diarrhea. People may also have allergies to food, food allergies. Some people may be allergic to milk we call that one lactose intolerance okay people may be allergic to granites or peanuts people may be allergic to seafoods so, so a lot of food allergies sometimes you see a client to come to the pharmacy with diarrhea that they eat a particular food that their bodies are not handling at well also some medicines can also give us side effects of diarrhea and especially uh, antibiotics antibiotics Notably is ampicillin, tetracycline, amosacillin, kefirozyme, that is xenat. Majority of the antibiotics we have can cause it, even azithromycin. Okay, so once a patient is being given an antibiotic, they may have a mild diarrhea, which normally the body will be able to resolve it. If not, we look at how to help the patient with. And eating too much unripe fruits, especially mangoes, okay, can also lead to diarrhea. Then also laxative and purgatives, obviously. Some people are taking laxatives and purgatives, mesanaco, um, the um, liver salts, like number 10 liver salt, Andrew's liver salt, Martin's liver salt. These liver salts can cause diarrhea. Okay, people take Epsom salts. Okay, people use mesanaco and other things. They cannot cause diarrhea. And also HIV AIDS. Normally in HIV AIDS, we see this diarrhea comes other symptoms. And normally, they have a long history of diarrhea and normally it's chronic, okay, and they need immediate medical attention. Diarrhea is often accompanied by vomiting and that is very dangerous, especially in, in children because they are losing a lot of fluids, okay. Whilst there's diarrhea and there's vomiting, that could be a danger sign and they need to go to the hospital immediately and normally the doctor would have to give intravenous infusion to replenish the lost fluids. The commonest cause of diarrhea in children is viral. Please let's underline viral, which means that there is therefore usually no need to prescribe antibiotics. So when somebody comes with a baby with diarrhea, please let's take note that most often than not it's caused by a viral infection and we don't give any antibiotic like metronizado or septrin or any of those antibiotics. Normally, the system will be able to handle it. So there's no need to give antibiotics because antibiotics may make it worse, by the way. Fluid loss occurs quickly in children. As we said earlier, about 78% of their body is made up of water. Okay. And if this is not corrected, it may result in dehydration, which can be very fatal. Never take the complaint of diarrhea lightly. Okay. Always ask how many times the patient has had diarrhea that day and the day before the patient has been to the toilet and the texture of the stools. This one gives us an idea of how severe it could be and how much fluids they might have lost. To one person who usually passes through once in three days, emotion every day seems like diarrhea. But to another person, it is normal. Please let's take note. Somebody is having two or three bowel movements a day, but it is not loose and watery. It is not classified as diarrhea. It is only diarrhea if it's three times in a day, more than three times in a day, and it's loose and watery. In children, other diseases as I've said, like malaria, pneumonia, ear infections, urinary tract infections may also cause diarrhea. So when a child is brought to our facilities, please let's examine the child carefully to see there's no obvious cause for the diarrhea. There is usually a fever if there is another cause. So when the child is running temperature, either it's an ear infection, if they are coughing and, and, and they're running temperature, it could be pneumonia, 
um, if we do an RDT for malaria and it's positive, obviously it's malaria. And we treat the cause, okay? And normally once you are treating the cause, the diarrhea will resolve. As I've said, giving antibiotics may cause or prolong the diarrhea. And later in our slides, I'll explain why. Malnutrition also causes diarrhea. If the pet child is not being fed well, the adult is not feeding well, their body may not have enough nutrients and energy to absorb the food that have been taken into the digestive system. And once the body is not absorbing, obviously it's going to result in diarrhea. So normally we say that if you're not eating well, you can have diarrhea. And diarrhea can also cause malnutrition, setting up a vicious cycle as seen in the next slide. So if somebody has gotten a low immunity, a low mucosa integrity, okay, which is very common predisposing factors, something that can prone you to get, okay, there's also losses, uh, increase in uh, losses of the fluid and there's increased catabolism, absorption is decreased, the person doesn't have any appetite to eat. Okay, so this thing, that's what we call a vicious sign continues. So the person will constantly be running. If you're not careful, it can be very fatal to their health. Now, when somebody comes to the pharmacy, these are the features we should watch out for. One, is there blood or mucus, okay, in the stool? Blood may indicate a presence of an ongoing infection, okay? So we want to ask, is there blood or mucus in the stool? If the answer is affirmative, it's yes, it will change the way you are going to treat it. Two, are you having fever? And as I've said, if there is fever, then obviously it's an infection. Okay, so let's check what is causing the fever. Is it malaria? Is it a ear tract, urinary tract infection or a ear infection? We have to post a check. We would also want to know the urine output plus the color of the urine. This one tells us whether they are having a renal failure or their kidneys are failing because they have become dehydrated. So you ask them the volume of urine they're able to pass and what is the color. If it's dark colored, normally we say dark color colored urine. It tells that it's a sign that there's an ongoing, possibly a kidney or renal failure. And presence of vomiting. In fact, if somebody's having diarrhea and they are vomiting, that tells us how severe the diarrhea could be and the duration of the illness, how, how long have they had the diarrhea. And as I've said, the, the, the longer the duration, the more complicated and com complexities that the patient will be having with their diarrhea. If diarrhea comes with vomiting and also there's no mucus, but there's a low grade fever, normally what is causing it could be a viral infection. And here, we don't treat, we leave the patient to go through. We give a normal ORS plus zinc for a child five years and below. The diarrhea is very watery and there's vomiting. The patient is having cramps. There's presence of blood and mucus and also the presence of fever. Then obviously we are thinking of a bacterial infection. In this case, we can give an antibiotic, but as we are medicine counter assistants, let's know that antibiotics are prescription medicines and the patient will have a prescription because before it can be served or it is, the patient is referred to the pharmacist. If the diarrhea comes with blood but there is no fever, then we think of something we call amoebiasis. Okay, normally the stool is frothy. Okay, it's like it's foaming. Okay, and it really smells bad. Sometimes it's greenish. Most of it are not. We think it is amoebiasis. And there's also a medicine we give, we call that antiprotozoa. Okay, later we'll be talking about it into details. And if the diarrhea is profuse, okay, we call the right water stools. And there is vomiting. Normally, we think of cholera. And here, please let's refer immediately. We can give ORS for the patient to take and refer them immediately. And if the patient vomited in the in our pharmacy or uh, put in our pharmacy, please let's wear protective equipment. Use chlorine bleach, anything like parazon to mop and clean the place very well and clean ourselves very well. If not. We may also have that bacterial infection called cholera, okay? So when somebody comes with diarrhea, that is right, water stools. You can see the food inside. They are vomiting profusely. Please, it is cholera and the person has to be fed. If the patient also comes with diarrhea and there's excessive vomiting, however, this vomiting is seen in more than one member of the household or a group. Normally, they eat the same food, okay, at a party or in the house. Then we think of food poisoning. Of food poison so it's not every type of diarrhea that we just rush to give metrolytic f or any of these medicines no 
let's find a cause before we treat. One problem in diarrhea is what we call dehydration. And dehydration normally results when the body loses more liquid than is sticking in. Okay, This can happen in severe diarrhea and then especially where there is vomiting. Anybody could get dehydrated, but it is more severe in children than in adults. Obviously, as I've said, because of their body size, any child with diarrhea is in danger of dehydration. And it's important for all to know the signs of dehydration and how to treat dehydration effectively. Now, anybody who is dehydrated is always thirsty. The child, the child will always want to drink water. Okay, they are always thirsty. There is little or no urine, and if there is urine, it's dark colored as i said just like cook okay it's colored then there's sudden loss in weight they 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 say drastic loss in weight we have seen there are some people who want to reduce their weight that they tend to take laxatives okay so that they pass to you they urinate uh, pass through a lot some take diuretic they urinate a lot in so doing obviously uh, we are losing weight but let's take note that the weight you are losing is not as in the body fats but water and that can be so dangerous to your kidneys and your brain and other vital body organs that can lead to death all right so please we don't lose weight by deciding not to drink water or to have diarrhea if you take any medicine that is causing diarrhea in in, in a sense that you are losing weight please advise our patients you should advise them that they may cause their life the patient may also have a very dry mouth very very dry nose saliva there is sudden tearless eyes especially children they are crying but we don't see any tears coming when you also stretch the skin and you leave the skin you can see that there's no stretchiness in the skin it has lost its elastic uh, abilities okay so these are the signs to look out for when somebody comes when they ask how long have they had the diarrhea and all those questions please let's check if there are signs of dehydration if the patient is severely dehydrated we still give ors and refer immediately to the hospital for an intravenous infusion to be given it can be managed at the pharmacy we end up losing our patient Severe dehydration could cause death. Please let's note severe dehydration could cause death. Now, this is a picture of a baby obviously going through the dehydration. They can see that there's a sunken frontal. Okay, so that is normally what we see, like just like a soft part in the scar of children, sometimes dented. Okay, if the child is very young, look at it, can see as if it's pulsating. Okay, it, basically as if it's breathing through that, that frontal okay so in children we see that so if you see any child with that and it's sunk in okay just like a hole sometimes I can even put your fingers inside it means that mother may not be breastfeeding while well, the child is dehydrated there's reduced level of consciousness the child cannot maintain at attention and the child looks absent-minded the lips are very very dry you can see okay they they, they lips open them are very dry and there's reduced muzzle tugger. Okay, if you pull the muzzle and leave, okay, it doesn't stretch. If you hold it, it takes a longer time for the muscles to relax. There's an increased heart rate. That's what called tachypnea. Okay, the heart rate is increased, and the person normally the child is breathing very, very, very fast. Okay, the heart increased heart rate called tachycardia, increased heart rate. But if the breath is going up, the child is breathing very deeply and very shallow. Okay, there's also sunken eyes and the eyes here. Let's can see the eyeballs and sockets is showing. Now, how do we prevent all these things from happening? One, we have to prevent dehydration. This is very important if the child has lost so much fluid through stooling and vomiting. We also want to replace all the fluid that the child has lost, normally through oral rehydration salt. Maintain nutrition. Tell the mother to feed that child very well. If the child is breastfeeding, it's important that we give the child a lot of breast milk to drink. Maintain personal hygiene. Normally, when people are having diarrhea, we do hand washing is very bad. And it could be dangerous if this is caused by an infection, like a bacteria. If you are not washing and keeping very good personal hygiene, it may spread among a group or household. So hand washing and other personal hygiene practices are very important when somebody gets diarrhea. And the last one, if there is any pathogens okay, present, we aim to eradicate and a pathogen is a microorganism that causes disease okay there are germs that cause our bodies to function abnormally okay any germ any organism that causes our body to to function abnormally or can cause a disease is called 
a pathogen. And if there's a pathogen in, in, indicated, we have to give medicines to treat that particular pathogen. What are some of the drug options we have when you're managing somebody in diarrhea? In most cases, as I've said, diarrhea is caused by viral or allergies to food, and no medicine is needed. The biggest danger here is dehydration. So, if diarrhea lasts longer than it could lead to malnutrition, and in most cases, diarrhea giving enough fluids is important, okay? And the fluids that normally we give is foods that are, are liquid, like soups, porridge, okay, rice water, any food with a lot of fluids is important. That's no matter the nature of the diarrhea, whether it's infection, food poisoning, cholera, whichever is causing diarrhea, the there are two most important things we do. One, we want to prevent and control dehydration, and we want to meet the nutritional needs of the person. Children... A child can be treated safely at home if there is no dehydration, okay? When they come to the pharmacy and do assessment, as I've taught you earlier on, uh, the child is not that thirsty, the eyeballs are not sunk in the head, okay? The frontal there is not gone in, we can manage the child. Now, we ask the mother to breastfeed rather than bottle feed. Please, let's take note. Most of the feeding bottles the mothers use, some are not well sterilized or washed and may have would be a source of the infection itself. So normally we ask the mothers not to use the feeding bottles, stop and breastfeed the child straight from the breast. Okay, it's very, very important because cleaning can be an issue. Breast milk has gotten a lot of proteins and can help the baby to recover faster. When babies are being given solid foods, we ask the mother to do it a little at a time. Sometimes we should give the child time for the body to learn how to digest the new food. If the babies are being rushed with foods, normally it may lead to a lot of complications. They should keep the environment clean and they should not give any unnecessary medicines, gripe water, um, a lot of medicines are not necessary, okay? And those medicines can make the diarrhea more fatal. Now, there are two main drugs that I want us to memorize. For this, it's very important. If you forget anything about drugs, don't forget ORS and zinc. It is golden now. Now, for children five years and below, we've seen that giving a low concentration oral rehydration salt, what you call ORS, and giving a zinc supplementation, okay, 20 milligrams per day for children older than six months for 10 to 14 days, okay, and the child is below six months, we give them 10 milligrams per day, also for 10 days, we have seen dramatic improvement. The zinc tablet, please, let's know, should not be mixed with the ORS because sometimes patients cannot drink the whole ORS solution. So they should be given separately. The child should be given separately. It should be dissolved in a small amount of water of the ORS, about 10 mils or 15 mil, and the child is given to drink. Afterwards, the ORS should be given. All right, let's take note. This is very important. We don't drop the whole, the zinc tablet in the whole ORS solution. Okay, it's mixed a small amount of the ORS solution or water or breast milk and it's given to the child. All right, we wait for some time before the ORS is given and they shouldn't drink it, they sip it so that it doesn't cause any vomiting and further dehydration. Now, this is a pictorial presentation of what I just said on administration of zinc. But you can see on top, I've said that zinc supplementation is important because we've seen it to reduce the duration and severity of diarrhea episodes and also the likelihood of subsequent infections for two to three months, which means that if a baby is giving you zinc, it's very possible within two to three months, they are not going to have diarrhea. It reduces the duration, okay, of the diarrhea, and also the severity of the diarrhea is reduced. The child basically feels well very, very fast. So anytime a baby comes to a pharmacy, a child comes to a pharmacy five years and below, please, we are giving zinc. Two months to six months, we are giving 10 milligrams dissolved in one teaspoon, okay, of breast milk or water, given for 14 days. Okay, this one is from UNICEF. And the child is between six months to five years old. We give 20 milligram tablets, dissolved also in one teaspoon of breast milk or ORS or clean drinking water. It's also given for 14 days. Now, there are four rules for treating diarrhea at home, and we should always tell the mothers this. Immediately teach the mothers of diarrhea child the method of making ORS and ask them to feed and after this child after this presentation sorry 
we are going to go through how the ORS is prepared. Okay, so the mother should give the child more fluids, more fluids aside the ORS, breast milk, soups. Okay, and the zinc tablet should be given to the child every day for 10 to 14 days. The child should continue to feed. And if the child is still not getting well, we should advise the mother that they should write the child to the hospital where we can manage them better. Because the child is still not able to feed and is still vomiting and having the diarrhea, the child may worsen. Okay, so we are supposed to tell the mother that these are the four key things we do when the mother comes to the child with diarrhea. How do you prepare ORS? It's very simple. So we dissolved one sachet of the ORS in 600 ml to 500 ml, depending on the manufacturer. Okay, 500 ml normally is one pure water of clean, freshly boiled and cooled water. It's important. Sometimes the source of the diarrhea, as I've said, could be the water, whether it's sachet or bottle. Sometimes it could be. But to be on the safer side, we ask the, the, the person to boil the water and wait for it to cool. Then they use to repair the ORS. So if there's any germ in inside the water, a pathogen, the heat should be enough to kill it. Now the child or adult should drink as much of it as he or she wants. And as I've said, they should be taking sips. Normally, ORS may not be very palatable. So if they drink all at once, they may be nauseic and they may vomit. vomit. So the child should take sips over a period of time so they can take a lot of the fluid. The child or the person vomits within 10 minutes. We ask the person to wait for 10 minutes and the solution is given back again. The other solution should be discarded after 24 hours of operation. Please let's take note. It's not used after 24 hours. Within 24 hours, whatever is left should be discarded and a fresh solution is prepared. How much ORS should these people take? If a child is below two years, we prepare 500 ml, that's one sachet of ORS, and they should take it basically anytime they stew. Okay, so any stew they go, the mother should give roughly between 50 to 100 ml for every stew the child passes. So assuming the child go four or five times, the mother is giving five times. This one is supposed to prevent dehydration. The child is between 2 to 10 years. We give about two sachets of ORS. Okay, that should give about 1,000 ml or more. And they take 100 to 200 ml anytime they pass a stool. They take it, all right? And the last one, the child is greater than 10 years old. We prepare 2,000 ml. That is four sachets of ORS. And that one, similar, anytime they pass a stool, we give 100 to 200 ml. If this diarrhea is caused by an infection, then there's a need for antibiotics to be given. And there are two main antibiotics that normally we, we recommend. The first one is Cotrimoxazole, properly called Septrin. It's given as oral tablets. An adult take two tablets, that's 960 milligrams every 12 hours for seven days. A child, six to 12 years, one tablet, 480 milligrams every 12 hours for seven days. Six months to five years, can take half a tablet or if you are giving the suspension normally about five mils they are taking 240 milligram every 12 hours for seven days let's not forget ORS and zinc is key we will still add the same ORS and the zinc tablets recommended to the antibiotics that have been given to the child if there's two have blood but there's no fever we give metronidazole. Please let's know when we give metronidazole, when we give septrin. Septrin is given where there's blood and the patient has fever. That's when we give. However, metronidazole is given where there's no fever, but there's blood. Okay, so you give metronidazole two tablets, 800 milligram every eight hours for five days. A child between zero to 300 milligram eight hourly for five days. A child four to seven years. 200 milligram eight hourly for five days, eight to twelve years, 400 milligram eight hourly for five days. For gadasses, okay, give metronidazole 400 milligram eight hourly for five days. Then we also add the ORS and zinc. Now there's a problem with antibiotics, the cotrimoxazole and the metronidazole. Sometimes when you give an antibiotic, it kills all the bacteria flora in the digestive tract and there are some that are good and there are some that are bad okay we normally want to kill the bad one that is causing the problem but however sometimes the good ones also die all right so this is a problem now once these good 
bacteria like the bifidobacteria, the Enterichia coli, and lactobacillus. Okay, very good for our systems, make us strong, helps the body to um, um, absorb nutrients and other stuff. Then it's important for us to replace them. So when we give an antibiotic, we are killing both the good and the bad. So normally when a patient has been given a course of antibiotics, and some of them may have diarrhea after us, it's advisable, recommend for them to take some other steps to restore the good bacteria that the antibiotics killed. And in restoring it, there are two main things that we can do. First is that we can eat a lot of probiotics. Okay, probiotics are substances that contains a lot of this good bacteria in the stomach, okay, notably lactobacillus. Once you eat them, they restore. Or we can take what we call a prebiotic. A prebiotic is a type of food that promotes the growth of this good bacteria. So the difference between a probiotic and a prebiotic is that a probiotic contains the bacteria itself, okay, so that when you take it, they go and replace them. But a prebiotic promotes our bodies okay there are foods that when we take promotes our body and they grow a lot of this good bacteria okay in our system then some fermented foods and notably about them is foods like yogurts and yeast foods and fiber eating a lot of fiber give your body the opportunity to grow a lot of these organisms so if anybody goes through a course of antibiotics we advise you to take probiotics and prebiotics we can really help and these are a few of some of the things we may see in a pharmacy. Biogia, very good for children, okay? And where a child has been given a course of an antibiotic for a cough or an infection, it's good for us to restore their normal bacteria where they are breastfeeding, okay? They cannot be eating all this yogurt and stuff. It may not be good for them because of allergies. And we have a prebiotic and a probiotic. It's very common in our country, Bifilac. Okay, can be, there's another one we call lactogena, also very common in our pharmacies. Or the patient can just go for a yummy yogurt. It's delicious. I love it myself. However, if the patient is allergic to milk and is trying to watch his weight, they may not want to take the yummy yogurt. So you can just decide to give them the medicine, the bifilac, okay, the baby, the bulgia. And there are a lot of brands on the market. I'm not promoting any brand, but... Whichever brand you think is good, when you speak the farmers, they'll show you. So after somebody has given an antibiotic, we can promote a probiotic, or we can ask them to eat a prebiotic food to restore the bacteria flora. Very important. Now in diarrhea, there's nausea and vomiting, and there are some drugs we call antiemetics. Antiemetics are drugs that relieve nausea and vomiting. Example is promethazine hydrochloride, what you call phenigan, or promethazine theoclate, what you call alvamin. Okay, these medicines can reduce vomiting if taken as 25 mg twice a day or just 25 mg at night. The promethazine hydrochloride and the promethazine theoclate can be given by, please let's be careful. This medicine may cause a lot of sedation and they may, because obviously the patient may be weak already and may make them more weak. So please, it's advisable that in diarrhea, I don't recommend we to give any medicine to control vomiting, okay? Um, unless, of course, by prescription. But in the pharmacy, I think we should just hold on because it may max the, the complications where we don't know whether it's the medicine causing the dizziness and the drowsiness and the weakness or... It is dehydration. Some may give domperidone. The popular brand name is Motilium. Okay, 10 to 20 milligram every four to eight hours. But I said, please let's hold on. Let's not give any antiemetics because it may shadow or may max severities in diarrhea. Sometimes, to some people may want to give an anti diarrhea, and it's very popular, like loperamide, or people may give cofinotrop or codeine or miscaulin. Okay, these medicines basically are used to treat acute diarrhea. But what they say that they, they stop the diarrhea and it's dangerous if the diarrhea is being caused by an infection and we stop it. It may worsen the state of the patient. So normally we don't advise to them to be given unless, of course, acute diarrhea is not caused by any infection or any bacteria. Maybe they ate a food or they took a drink 
or something they're having it but if you are not sure please let's not give any anti-diarrhea medicines it could cause the life of our patients now let's look at uh, what we have done today we've known what diarrhea is and you should be able to answer these questions i recommend please you do it you can send it to my inbox okay i'll look at your answers if it's okay we can discuss on our various whatsapp platforms if you want to send it to my inbox, you already know my email address. It's macbequin4 at yahoo.com. Thank you a billion time for having the time to listen to our presentation and watch out for more as we stay down for the coronavirus pandemic. God bless you. Thank you very much.